Hi guys, it's Salston. Today we are going to take a look into a SAS called Airbrush. In this video, I'm going to explain what it does and I'm going to show you all the features of the product and real use cases and examples and testing of the product. And also finally, I'm going to share pros and cons which I have found out so far. Okay, without further ado, now let's go into the video. First, what is Yarbrush? Yarbrush is a software which uses AI engine to generate images based on the text you provide or we also call this text as prompt. You can describe any image you want and you can ask an AI to generate an image for you. It is a new concept on the market. There are a lot of tools does it uh, and I will also look one by one but in this video we are going to focus on Yarbrush. Okay without further ado I'm already in Yarbrush. Currently there is a lifetime deal going on for Airbrush also so if you are interested on it I will leave a link in the description and if you decided to purchase through that link I will get a small commission but does not affect your purchase price but it helps me to create more videos like this. Okay now let me logged into this uh, App and show you how it will look like from the back end and all the features behind it. You can see I have already started using it a lot because you can see I have used a lot of credits. I have also arranged some sort of giveaway within my community and encouraged all the other users to give or the members to give prompts. And I will show you these prompts which I used from their inputs to generate images in the latter part of the video where I will be showing the testing uh, of all the different images to give more feedback on the AI generation process. Now let me quickly introduce the tool. For example, this is the tool dashboard. It is very simple to use. There is not much complexity involved. It is very straightforward. There is very easy to use from a beginner point of view. Where as soon as you come to the dashboard, you will see all the recent generations of images you have done and you have a profile section which is obvious with the credit usage and create and also it will give you a small uh, dark mode option in case if, if you prefer the dark mode option. And if you see on the left side of the screen, this is where all the different features within the app exist. For example, the main one is going to be the create image option. Where when you come to this, you will see a prompt, a prompt screen where you are, they are asking for a description. You select the engine, you select the dimension and you can click on create image. Okay, to explain how this uh, functionality works, let me uh, get a promote uh, prompt which uh, one of our members has done. So I can show you the real life example on this. Uh, this let me take this from... Isaac and I am going to give it this description and there are two different AI engines is which currently available within Airbrush. One is called Stable Diffusion. Another one is called Dali E2 and I personally asked for differences from the founder itself and now I'm going to read the differences which the founder gave it to me. The Stable Diffusion is an open source AI engine and we can host it on our own rented GPU. The DALI E2 is provided by OpenAI due to this, which is fairly expensive and restrictive in terms of NSFW content. The DALI E AI engine is ideal when you're just starting with AI image technology and want to try different prompts. The stable diffusion AI engine is idle uh, when you have gained experience experimenting for few hours with AI image technology. I will show you more proofs on what are the differences and what kind of different images both different uh, engines are able to produce in the latter part of the video. But basically you get two different types of image generation process. Table diffusion is an open source which means when you use this uh, uh, stable diffusion AI engine you consume really uh, very low amount of credit. For example, where if I put the stable diffusion and there are three different size you can generate. They, they only provide three different uh, types. 
small large and extra large if you are in large you will consume one credit if you go into the extra large you will get consume four credits so it does not mean every one credit you generate an image that is possible when you click on really small size or 512 when you go for a large image you consume a lot more credits similarly when i go into the dali option now i consume even a lot more the reason is the from my testing dali e provides much more accurate uh, generation of ai images i'll show you examples of it but just understand the consumption of credits because it is dependent on the engine you use and also the size you use so in this case i'm just going to keep it as dali e just for examples case and i'm going to choose extra large and just i am going to click on create image now it is going to take generally it takes around five seconds uh, it can range anywhere from couple of seconds or sometimes even more it is going to take a uh, different uh, steps uh, time based on the input we give for example you can see i type the promote human and holding a wine glass natural realistic and you can see it actually generated a really good image based on that because it is a human and it is holding a wine with the glass a wine inside the glass so it's really accurate in terms of what it was able to produce and i can simply download and i also can give feedback in case if you want to uh, giving feedbacks generally help them to create much more uh, they are optimizing their service so if you want you can give it and let me also quickly show you the stable diffusion as well when I click on stable diffusion, now it's going to consume me 4 credits which is very less compared to the DALL-E 2 which is 10 credit for extra large. The credit consumption might change in the future. I'm just mentioning as I found, find it right now within this thing. And you can see it tried to generate but it's infusing. This is one of the reasons I wanted to show you on the testing side because I have found this so many times when I'm doing the testing. I've personally found the DALL-E to be much more accurate. I'm not sure uh, if you can, once you trained and you give very specific prompt to stable diffusion, it generates much more uh, accurate images. I will show you example when I'm uh, showcasing all the members uh, prompts which the members provided in our group. So you can get a better idea on it. Now when I go into the history section, let me quickly go through the other features as well. History is just going to show you all the history of the image generation. It will show you what is the promote I gave and also it will give a download button to download the image and as well as a delete option also provided. But please note there is no organization available within history. It's just a list of all the images which I was able to generate you can see. So that is what history does. The next one is called search gallery. Basically the concept behind this is uh, gives you option to search for images generated on their library. Uh, basically you type uh, whatever the uh, keyword or anything like that. If they have any images on their public library, rather than generating it, it will automatically show you. Uh, I double click on it and it went for not found. I'm not sure what I did. Let me go back and do a search again. And you can see that it's already showing all the different car. It also shows you, I like this feature because it shows the prompt because that, that way I can understand more. Like if I provide this kind of a prompt, I might be able to get this kind of image. So it also helps me to understand what kind of input i can give it to ai to get this kind of a uh, put this kind of a image for example you can see i get this and it's a realistic portrait of a intricately detailed beetle colorful pattern cyberpunk it's a lot and you can see it's generated so i can get a basic idea behind it so you can search for it and see for example if i type people i'm not sure let me give this a try and see whether there's something well i'm not sure why 404 error is coming back uh, let me go try it one more time uh, let me try something else uh, maybe whether that works or not 
okay it came and you can automatically see all the different stuffs is available within that so that is the basic concept behind search gallery rather than generating an image you go out and enter whatever the keyword you want and it will show you all the relevant images which is available within the public gallery with the prompt and the download button okay now let me quickly show you this feature which is called upscale an image which is a really uh, small unique feature where you can provide any small images and it will automatically try to upscale or enlarge the images by clarifying it, sharpening and also upscaling the photo without losing the content and defining characteristic. To be honest, I have not fully tested it in depth as I have tested the create image process, but I'll show you what it does from an example. You can see uh, I have just searched for an image within Google and it's a really small image. Like if I scroll, you can see it's getting obviously pixelated and let me give this URL here and click on submit. And now ideally what it should is it should in, uh, improve the image. So let's see whether that has done it or not. Let me open this and you can see obviously try to optimize the image. Let me do a comparison. You can see it has tried to uh, make the sharpened image which is not perfect but it has tried to get a much more meta image for example this is definitely not the best uh, upscaling but you can see from this to this there is obviously differences when it comes to sharpness and pixelating so depending on that you can upscale it even further let me show you one more example okay now i'm going to test it one more time with this this time i have tried to get a human element into the image and you can see if i scroll uh, zoom it out it's definitely it's getting pixelated now i'm going into this and i'm going to paste that image into the submit screen let's see what it provides now because this is this and now i'm going to download it and let me open it up and we can compare it so this is the image we have let me zoom it out uh, this is obviously pixelated now when i zoom this out it's not perfect but you can see there is obviously differences between this and this so that is what this particular feature does image upscaler basically that is all the features for this software right now now let me show you some test results from the all the members i have arranged a giveaway within our community you can join the community and see this discussions from your end as well i will leave the link for the community with this post in the description and you can see a lot of member provided a lot of different prompts which i was able to use and actually show the users on these are the image which was able to generate for example this is a huge prompt which frederick gave and you can see the different uh, image it was able to generate by dali and the standard definition and you can see different uh, prompts and these are the images it was able to generate and some of the images i really liked it a lot for example uh, coastal scene from sky cyberpunk all these details and it was able to generate this i specifically mentioned what kind of ai generation it was what is the size of it and how much credit it consumed all these details and these are the reasons reason i didn't like stable diffusion that much because you can see it is a really simple uh prompt as off smile and off sad face and even though it has mentioned a uh, it tried to combine two different uh person and this is also not um much accurate i wanted to show this as well because does not just by using dali e2 you are not going to get accurate image uh, generation for everything i wanted to show that in person as well you just need to keep on improving the prompt but the negative is whenever you try different prompts it is going to consume you credit for that so just keep that on mind and these are different images it has generated let me show you this one i really liked because it generated a really accurate one and even the member was uh, agreed with me for example an old man smoking a cigar wearing a leather hat sunset retro highly detailed realistic and punchy color that was the prompt you can see the diffusion tried to get these things but it 
didn't understand an old man it was we asking for one single person he tried to get this thing but it's not accurate to be honest but when i used dali 2 it produced a really good uh, ai image for that so that is the these details i'm not going to go into every single one but you can see there are a lot of different images with come feedbacks from all the other members you can browse through it if you want i will leave this in the description and there are a few more i have to generate images for these uh, members as well okay now let me quickly talk over the what are the pros and cons which i've observed so far first pro the software itself very easy to use there is no complexity even when i go into the create images it's just one typing field and two selection field download button the software is very beginner friendly there is no complexity involved the dali e2 engine provides really good images compared to the stable diffusion that's i have observed because uh, from the members output also if you go into the our community i will leave the link you can see for the inputs it has provided the DALI to generation AI engine provides much more accurate. It's not the best accurate generation, but it provides much more accurate than the stable diffusion in my view. And also generation of images also does not take too much of a time. The I general average time is around five seconds, but I sometimes found it has gone into something like eight to 10 seconds. Sometimes it's faster, but the average tends to be around five seconds there is a dark mode option also available within the app in case if you prefer that history of ai generated image so once you generated you you are just not losing those images in case if you want to go back you can download it you can see the prompt as well image upscale feature not perfect but still it is doing a decent job trying to upscale the image by improving the clarity not the best job but it's doing a decent job and also the support is good because i asked some questions i will show the screenshot and when i asked the question the founder they were really eager to answer the question and when i was doing the conversation also they are very eager to or sort out any doubts clarification for that so from my personal experience the support is really good now let me go into the cons of the product so far the stable diffusion which i have found out so far it is not the most accurate uh, i'm not sure because i'm a beginner in this field i'm a general user i'm new to ai image generation so from my point of view i don't like stable diffusion that much for me dali e2 is much more accurate but the problem for me is if I use that engine, it is going to be consuming more credits for me. For example, stable diffusion with extra large consumes around four credits, I think. But when I use DALI, it's consuming 10 credits. For example, I'm with the extra large, you can see four credits it's going to be using. But when I go into the DALI E2, it is going to consume me 10 credits, almost double the credits plus off. So that is the con. And another con which i have observed was there is no way to organize these images it is just list of images so it might not be a huge deal if you are generating couple of images but when you are going to generate a lot of images you're going to keep working on it i like to see a folder structure or directory architect uh, structure uh, directory option within this specific screen so i can tag this or organized into the folders so i can get a much much uh, ease of finding these images without getting clumsy on this because you can see as this itself it's getting really long so i want to be able to organize this so another con and also currently there is only three different sizes available within this you can see if i go into this small which is 256 uh large 512 and extra large 1024 I would personally like to set custom sizes and I also like to set sizes more than this 1024. That is a personal preference which I found it as con. So those are the pros and cons. That is the overview of the product. In case if you have any more doubt, feel free to ask me in the comments. You can see other members promote in our Facebook group. And also if you have any other question, feel free to let me know and I will be happy to answer it. 
Uh, and also, I will leave the link for this product in the deal. There is a currently a lifetime deal. If you are interested in that, you can check that out. And once again, thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope to see you guys in another great video.